I'm Jennifer Egan, and the mini class I'm going to lead you through now is designed to try to coax out of you some unconscious writing that has some m lively moment that can be a portal into a fictional world. For me, finding a way into fiction is all about getting ahead of my conscious analytical mind and finding a way to surprise myself with language and ultimately events that I was not looking for. That's where all the good stuff comes from. And while I do revise endlessly, without this unconscious generation process, there would be nothing worthy of revision. So we're gonna do a three-part exercise inspired by teaching from my longtime friend and compatriot, Ruth Dannon, who is an amazing poet as well. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is pause me and get a pen, a free-flowing pen and some paper. We're doing this by hand. Okay, the reason we're going to do this by hand is that I find handwriting to be a very helpful tool in turning off my conscious mind. It's much harder to read than it is to, to read uh, text in front of you on a screen. And there's a kind of meditative quality to handwriting. If you can sort of get into a groove that I find very useful, again, in eluding the, the censoring, and in my case, sort of dull-minded uh, conscious thinking. We're going to do a word throw. I'm going to throw various bits of language at you. Your job is to start writing when I give you the first one and not to stop. And the point of, of throwing all of these different words and phrases at you is to keep you from making sense. We are generating nonsense. If what you're writing does not make sense, you're doing it correctly. We're just trying to get some language on the page that feels alive. So get ready, and here's the first phrase, and don't stop once you start. Light appeared. Honey. Crawl. Pierce. Underneath. Tricky. I thought I knew. Bells. Twisted. The path forward. Misunderstood. Tore open. Shaking. Five. Blue. Finish the phrase that you're writing. Let it, you know, exhaust the the moment you're in on the page. And then what I want you to do is pause me and read through what you've written and underline the bit of language that leaps out to you as being the most suggestive, the most intriguing or rich. Again, this is not about making sense. This is just about some moment in the language that grabs you. So pause me and do that. Okay, now that you have your 
moment of language that feels alive, what I, what I want you to do is write a sentence using that bit of language and adding a reference to time. Now, what do I mean by reference to time? There, are, we use them constantly without realizing it. Before, later, yesterday, two hours ago, long ago, in the end, I remember. All of those are references to time and it doesn't, you can use any of those or, or, or your own. The reason a reference to time is important is that in some way, in some way fiction is always the story of time passing. Time is the essential ingredient in fiction. And the minute we hear a reference to time, as a reader or a listener, we feel instinctively that we are being told a story, that we're actually at a portal into a parallel fictional world. And if you think about what is the most archetypal storytelling beginning, once upon a time, boom, we're in it, we're being told a story. So the final part of this exercise, which you will do without me, is to write a sentence using your suggestive language and incorporating some element of time. And that is the potential beginning of a story. You may not want to pursue that story. You may want to try this differently. But for me, this is the best shot at finding my way into another world where rich and surprising events can take place. Good luck, keep the faith, stay healthy, and I'll see you on the other side.